it was a funky and short-lived winter. And with signs of spring showing earlier than usual, I was anxious to make some changes I had been contemplating all throughout 2021. They revolved around letting go of the past, downsizing, saving money, and ultimately simplifying. My life had become cluttered and overcomplicated for no good reason, and it was time to fix that. The goal was to use what was already there to make daily life more efficient and enjoyable. So Allie and I got gym memberships, which would allow us to free up a large portion of our already limited space, as this apartment is probably under 600 square feet. And as part of this initial phase, I took down every single decoration I've collected over the years, shedding old decisions, and allowing for a clean slate. In trip after trip, everything was brought down the narrow stairs and dropped off at a storage unit where it would most likely be used later on at my cabin or be sold at a tag sale. And then it was time to make the place feel bigger and brighter. And the best way to do that with a small space is use white. A couple years back, I had put up fake brick on a few walls to match the real brick but in person it looked kind of cartoony. And after we redid our bathroom, we discovered that painting it white looked more convincing, and it still helped accentuate the real brick in the space. And as far as painting the trim white, it helps remove the borders which define the edges of the space, making it feel bigger, and it reflects the light coming in from the windows, making it brighter. And it was just cheap Home Depot trim in the first place, so you're not covering up any timeless character. And while the first day of renovations felt like spring, we woke up to one of winter's final breaths. And we got an early start as we had a lot of work ahead of us. We were moving the bed out of the bedroom as that space was going to become my new office. And the bed would be in a much more open area with tons of light, so we'd always wake with the sun. And in a small space like this, with tons of stuff around, it can be overwhelming and cluttered and hard to see the end vision. And to me, that tornado effect is a natural result of true change, the kind that most people avoid because it's uncomfortable. And through the process, we tried certain designs along the way to see what felt right and what didn't. And overall, this kind of change takes a lot of planning and a good order of operations, especially when you're getting rid of stuff, as we had to constantly be packing things as we went, making sure all our trips were maximized. And so we'd paint and then let it dry while we went to the storage unit, back and forth through the windy squalls. We went on a little pizza and beer binge through the process, and eating pizza on the floor is one of my favorite things to do during projects like this. And we were making good progress, even though there were still many truckloads of stuff that needed to be removed. And with so many different things that needed to be done, it helped to pick one area at a time and finish it before moving on to the next. And with the bedroom nearly done, Allie organized her clothes, while I readied my new office. <laughs> Mo, what did you have to say? And I added
added little touches like a pull-up bar, which I found necessary to have around when you spend a lot of time sitting and working. And then came the hardest part, which was the beginning of deconstructing my old office. This place will get a dedicated story soon, but the short version is, it's way more space than we need, and it's surrounded by hubbub. So at the apartment, we can have a more private and quiet place to work and spend our time, and save a bunch of money a month by getting rid of the old space and selling all the stuff inside it. And this entire transformation is centered around the idea that we're going to be spending a majority of our time at my off-grid cabin anyway. So we'll just have this one spot in town where we can work, do laundry, and take a hot shower. And as final touches were coming to different corners of the space, the feeling of inspiration and excitement was undeniable. We were consolidating everything, keeping only what we would use on a daily basis and either selling or giving away the rest. And one of the things I was most excited for was to open up the kitchen. <laughs> turn the closet we never used into an open pantry and give the whole space one cohesive floor to match the bathroom. And so we'd paint, load up the car, and keep hitting it hard back and forth. And at one point, my mom stopped by to see the progress and drop off the handmade trout and coffee item for my monthly Patreon giveaway. For the giveaway? Try it on. <laughs> her work is constantly improving, and her items are so professional. So if you want to check out my Patreon or her Etsy shop, the links are in the video description. So the cohesive floor was already making the space feel so much bigger and cleaner, especially compared to what it looked like when I first moved in about four years ago. And if you want to see how this place looked originally and how it's evolved over the years, I made a playlist on this channel called Tiny Apartment Updates. And after about a week of nonstop work, the place was still a mess, but things were feeling incredibly different. Now we needed to start setting up Allie's work area. And so we took some old tables I made out of the storage unit, and Allie picked her two favorite colors to paint them, sage and terracotta. And that's a whole other part of this transformation. When Allie moved in about a year ago, she moved into my space that I had designed alone over the years. But this opportunity was a chance for us to work together to design a space that feels like home for both of us. And taking on a project like that with your partner allows you to learn and grow together, and ultimately strengthens your bond. So now we were both finalizing our office spaces, which were intended to be as efficient as possible. <laughs> Mal, explain yourself. <laughs> Mal, you know you're not supposed to do that. He seems to be pleading the fifth. Yeah.
And so Allie chipped away with her final touches, and I was left with my last major undertaking, going through my clothes and closet and turning the closet into a recording booth. Eye patch now. I need a relatively soundproof room to edit in and produce my voiceovers and music. And so I put up sound blankets over the doors and I did my vinyl and foam formula for the vocal booth. Oh, this is gonna be so cool. Having a closed recording space here is worlds different than the one at my old office where all day long diesel trucks rumbled and beeped and strangers stopped by unannounced. And overall, the feeling was anxious rather than content. And I took breaks from the sound booth to finalize the rest of the space, including this new little breakfast nook in the kitchen. And after about two weeks of nonstop work every single day, our new space was completed. and it was Mowgli approved. Now, Allie has a bright and inspiring space to make her Etsy products and work on her videos. And I have a private and ergonomic place to create my art and do all my back-end business work too. And through this journey, we brought new life into what was already there. We made spaces that make it fun to work in, be productive, and most importantly, live. Now I can run my laundry while I edit a video and bake bread all at the same time. And by getting rid of the old office, I can save money and headaches every month, get rid of the clutter I've collected, and overall, simplify life moving forward. It feels like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders and the square peg has been whittled round and now fits tight. It can be hard to take on a project like this because change is scary and smashing your home to pieces just to pick it back up again doesn't sound like fun, but nothing good comes easy. And the only way to make a major life change is to start somewhere. Mm -hmm.